It's been actually well over a year since I've made a car video on this channel. I know a lot of mountain bike fans are also car fans. I'm absolutely one of those people. I'm a massive petrol head. So the last car video I made that wasn't jumping my Nomad or building jumps for a car was with my Lamborghini Huracan Performante, which is still a crazy sentence to say, to put my in front of that. But I had a Lambo, it was the best thing ever. But I sold it over a year, just over a year ago now. I get loads of comments and questions asking about that car. It's long gone. But I sold it in aid of like this over here, not this, that. Like buying a farm to build jumps, more backyard builds, a skate park, to live out kind of this childhood dream that I have. And now a year on, I'm very, very lucky. I'm back in the car game. Now, I'll talk about this in a minute. In that year, there wasn't a day that went by where I didn't look on auto trader and look at car dealerships and kind of I was just searching and searching and searching but always for one of these a McLaren 600 LT wasn't I Ben yeah I was really obsessed with this supercar for lots of reasons Ben was obsessed in me not buying one <laughs> because he you've got your own views on this haven't you yeah just I know, such just, a Porsche guy yeah 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 <laughs> such a Porsche guy um so McLaren, British supercar brand. I've never owned a British car, I don't think. I absolutely love it so much. I'll talk about it more in a minute. I just, this is, that is the coolest looking car. It's it is insane. absolutely ridiculous looking car. I think it looks way cooler than the Lambo. When we look at some of the features in a minute, it's just so aggressive, especially the back end. I know that Lambo are Lambo and they're pure theater. This does do this, which I can't get over. <laughs> kind of. It might be lame, but that was probably one of the top three reasons that... It actually, <laughs> it was the top. Yeah, well, sure, it so was the top. Me. But um, <laughs> yeah, I absolutely adore cars, and this is, well, my new supercar. It's also a spider, so the roof comes off, which is like, <laughs> to you, double lame, but it's double <laughs> sick. It's not a very good farm vehicle, so we're working out, like, in the minute, where to park it and things, which is why I'm doing a, like, kind of a walk around here, but... It's incredible. I actually bought it, well, I guess a week ago for less than I sold my Performante for a year ago. So that is probably the best value for money supercar you can buy right now. And it's two years newer than the Perf. So like those sorts of naturally aspirated Lambos and things, a lot of those cars, their prices lifted in lockdown because of the supply chain issues of new ones. So the Performante actually kind of like stayed the same if not gained a little bit in my ownership time meanwhile these seem to come down more and more and more which is bizarre because the performance figures are insane and i've got i went i was quite particular on spec the 600 lt is 600 it's not actually 600 horsepower it's 600 ps what is a ps oh i don't, I don't like know, a metric you know. power rating so it yeah. must be a, a, a unit that's metric and not to do with horses i don't know what what horse they use to measure the horsepower <laughs> i don't know if he's still alive <laughs> poor guy just pulling all the time um the 600 ps it's a little bit lighter than the performante but only by about 50 60 kilograms i think i get confused sometimes between the dry weight and the kind of curb weights of cars before they add all the oils and everything but this weighs 1350 kilos like right now with everything added and at 600 ps is 592 horsepower that gives it an insane power to weight ratio i think 430 brake horsepower per ton which is 20 less than the perf but interestingly i'm going to compare it to that car i know i don't own it anymore but that's been my experience of supercar ownership really other than the gt3 but these are all in a league of their own that power to weight is insane but because it's only rear wheel drive it's naught to 60 time is a little bit less than the Hurricane was. This is 2.8, 2.9. Is it though? Because I'm sure I've seen a race where it's this quicker the thing. than a... On paper, they're slower. In reality, McLaren have such an intelligent launch system. Mm. It's bizarre. Even though it's two wheel drive, the width of the rear tires is less than a four wheel drive Lambo. Over a quarter mile, it's pretty much got the same quarter mile time on paper. I think in reality, it smashes it. Although I don't have a great amount of experience with this car yet, what I do have a lot of experience with is Surfshark VPN. Now, VPN is a virtual private network. They essentially cover up what you do online as a mask and keep you safe. If you're often surfing the internet in cafes and airports, they're an absolute hotspot for hackers. And using a VPN network essentially encrypts what you do and keeps your photos and passwords safe. The other massive benefit for me is when traveling. So 
let's say I'm halfway through my eighth watch of the eighth series of Suits, <laughs> and next month I'm going to ride Darkfest in South Africa, Suits might not appear on the Netflix library. Whereas if you use a VPN, you can control the country in which you're surfing the internet from. You can literally travel with a VPN. I could, I could log into Canada right now and get the widest Netflix library ever, or when arriving in South Africa, could flick it back to the UK and get all the benefits. That includes geoblock websites, so if you travel to China, it's almost impossible to use things like WhatsApp, whereas a VPN means that you can log in to all those block websites and just basically carry on life as you are. Now, if you want to use Surfshark VPN, there's a link in my description below where you can save 83% by using code Matt Jones and then get a further three months for free. Couldn't recommend it more. It's really safe. Unlike this turbocharged weapon that's going to kill me. When you drive it, honestly, the bonnet kind of tapers so aggressively into the ground that it feels like you can just see the whole front end and almost see the floor around here. That's really unusual in a car where you sit so low. The sheep are so loud today, aren't <laughs> non -stop. they? It's like a farm review. It's not a farm vehicle. <laughs> They're actually flat out. Right, let me talk a bit about spec. So it's black. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's got carbon louvres, right? They're epic. They're really rare as an option. They louvres. feature louvres. Louvre? I actually Louvre. don't know. It's the building in France. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's the building in France, yeah. Um, Louvre. They're really cool. And obviously to have them, you have to change this entire wing. As an option on their own, <laughs> they're £10,000, which is so dumb. But if you get the Club Sport pack on a McLaren, which features those, the centre seats, which I would say we'll look at in a minute, but they're so insane. How cool are they? They're ridiculous seats out of the McLaren Senna. They're so insane. They are crazy. When we take the roof off in a minute, I'll show you how cool they are. But, um, <laughs> and you get some telemetry system that's to do with track cameras and things inside to film your track Those time. little cameras are really, really, really I cool. I think these are part of the Club Sport pack. I should have checked the paperwork. But it kind of makes it a more cost-effective building all those options in. But I love those and I really wanted one with those. Carbon mirrors. Now the kind of elephant in the room for people who know about McLarens is that, let me show you the rear end. The rear end on these is just outrageous. The exhaust pipes come out of the top of the car. <laughs> that, and apparently they fire flames. I've not really driven, well, they must do, because look, that wing has got burnt marks on it. And yeah, the diffuser, crazy. as one huge piece, is the, that. It's massive. Was, or that was actually reason number one. But, that whole huge piece of plastic, you can get in carbon fiber, one massive bit of carbon. Same goes for the front splitter. So this one is lacking the carbon pack two, which would be front splitter, rear diffuser, all in carbon. That's a really expensive option, but I, was, I really wanted that option. And then I kind of discussed with myself internally late at night, <laughs> where I live at the end of a farm track, the fact that a black car with black carbon, it's actually kind of doesn't do the carbon fiber justice. It's black on black. Whereas that kind of painted semi- oh, It's, it's like, like anthracite. -y. I was gonna it's say really anthracite, nice. it's a dark gray. Against the car, against the black, creates so much contrast and I think brings the black to life. But the main reason was, if I smoked the front splitter on a bump, literally which would, could be part of my driving out the driveway, you'd have to replace that entire front splitter and apparently that's 12,000 uh. pounds. Now that would make owning one of these so, so horrific as a concept for me, because I'm pretty stretched on owning it. And what, for what reason? Like, why does it need to be carbon? Yeah, it it's only when you get really, really close that you appreciate that it just looks epic as it is. So that's that, because I had that kind of internal battle deciding whether the carbon pack two was really, really necessary. <laughs> like it's ridiculously aerodynamic, isn't it? Look at the shape of it. These intakes here are out of this world. There's the radius is in there, but look how much air goes through there. This is weird as well. Yeah, it's odd. There's like it's big crazy. holes missing out of the entire car up there. I don't know what that does. Yeah, it's super aero looking. It's epic. Um, right, I'm going to fire up and get the roof off. The only thing that's unusual, apparently this is almost the only club sport spider in the country. I don't think there's many. So the club sports, all those track options but actually they're half aesthetic really. The seats are just epic. But then you would have a roll bar, or it's more of a, is that right? I can't remember, Tom's explaining it to us. Is there a cage? A cage, yeah, I think you have a roll cage as part of the club sport, but when you have a spider with no roof, you can't get the roll cage. So you kind of got this track focused kit that's combating a get your hair dry <laughs> in the wind kit, you know? The engines are 
8 litre V8 twin turbo. So compared to the Lambo, it doesn't sound as great on startup. It is a bit warm, so that wasn't a cold start, but it's not like an aggressive fire up, is it? It's not no. like the Lambo was, but I kind of, it's, I don't know, it's less obnoxious, it's not a bad thing. But, yeah, but it's cool, it's got like a turbo whistle. The turbo whistle's sick, and the fact that it's got two turbos means that this has more torque than that Larry V10. Yeah, way more. Look at this little window in the back. That is such a cool thing, because you hear the exhaust so much when you drive, it's, and you can do it in the rain. So even when it's raining, you get pure exhaust and bangs and upshift. Um, right, let me shut, I think you have to shut this. When's your next appointment? Oh, I don't. <laughs> At least I've got a lot of hair for the wind. <laughs> yeah, that, that little whistle is the sickest sound. It's got a soft limiter, so you can only rev it to 4,000 when it's not warm, but that's a good thing. Right, these seats now, you can appreciate them, can't you? Mate. And the fact that the whole entire inside of this car is carbon. Look, the whole tub, the entire car, it's crazy. is one massive carbon tub. That's something McLaren do exceptionally well, is like the, the position of driving this car. It's got Alcantara dash, tiny little glove box, which is still got some mints in there. It's nice. For its last service. I think in the summer we should take the floor mats out and yeah. just have it like race spec. Especially as you carbon. ruined that one last time you got in here. Come on, mate. Jesus. Loads of storage. I like this system. It's a bit confusing sometimes. I think McLaren uh, overcomplicated the, like that system. But, that is yeah, really cool. I don't actually know how to use it, but to have track foot, that will all link up with the telemetry stuff. Yeah. And you can drive it like this in glasses. <laughs> uh, it's got the Bowers and Wilkin sound system, which adds. That speaker there is how you know it's got the better sound system. We don't like that, do we? Yeah, it's quite ugly. I don't know. It's, you said it's like one of those parrot Bluetooth yeah. bolt on there. Yeah. But th this is really clever, okay? So it's got a button there. BMW do this with the M button. So for me, as soon as you press active now, handling goes into sport, which is suspension and ESC. And then the powertrain would go into sport, which um, support sport which makes it automatically a man I can't say automatically a manual I'm not very good at these videos <laughs> it makes it go to manual so it would redline a gear it would bounce off the limiter so you kind of actually got a more involved drive straight away just from pressing that and the gear shifts are faster I think it just opens up the valves and everything just it's in sport isn't it but yeah I mean sat I here so. <laughs> in a farm having only really done 15 miles on it so far <laughs> Let's not talk about the powertrain too much. Mention the paddles. Oh yeah, the paddles it's like an F1 car. are linked. So when you pull that one, that one goes back. So it's on like a cantilever system. That means you can change up and down with one hand. Like by pushing that forward, it pulls that in. So you, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. It is a cool, yeah, it's a cool Because in, in every other car I've driven with paddles, you have to have two hands on the wheel the whole time. Whereas you can just kind of go up, down, up, down, up, down. Do you reckon it's like one single piece massive. of carbon? Yeah, it must be. It has to link. Because what's because F1 steering wheels do links. the same thing, so there must be an advantage. Very, very, And as we know, very, McLaren very have cool. had such a rip-roaring success in Formula 1. <laughs> well, they have. Yeah, they, they have yeah. at some point. Uh, it's cool nuts with the yeah. doors it's up. Insane, isn't it? We need to go and like make some really cool driving videos, especially as Ben's got his Cayman GT4. We could go and make some flames come out of this thing. Let me show you the storage space, it's exceptional. <laughs> yeah, boy. That's actually not bad at all. It's not, is it? That's actually not that bad. Jamie, do you think you could get in there? Jamie couldn't, but you could, I reckon. You did this with the perf, do you remember? I can't, I've lost. Go on, keep trying. I haven't done Pilates, mate. I've got a hernia. Mate, you're almost there. You're act that's actually really impressive. Big boot. <laughs> Didn't even, it doesn't even go down, does it? It's such a stiff car. It's so, yeah, it's really stiff. Yeah. This Any thing storage at the back? Hey? No. Any storage at the back? Uh, yeah, there actually is. What? You yeah, there, I promise you. Um, no, there isn't. Yeah. What, under here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Hang on, I need to remember how to do it. Okay. Oh, look, the time. Oh. The time is 
which is what you probably should have bought. <laughs> <laughs> that can open. Oh, okay. oh great. Awesome. Oh, but right now it's got the roof in it. <laughs> when the roof's up. <laughs> When the roof's up, um, there's a bit of storage space in there, obviously, because it can hold a roof. <laughs> yeah. What well, do you think, though? It's so sick. I'm so into it. Really happy. I probably should have waited to film this video so I could have expressed some more feeling about driving it, but the th sat there, especially with the roof off. No, it's mental, yeah, mental. Yeah, I'm extremely thing. proud of that. I've never ever owned a car with power, like a turbocharged car. I've always had naturally aspirated cars, a C63, a GT3 the Lambo, the other C6, yeah, they've all been naturally and aspirated. The and the Fiat Stilo. My first three, yeah, that was the sick. I, <laughs> I hope people watching can relate, but for me, the, a lot of people I've met, their favorite car of all time was their first car. And mine was my Fiat Stilo. It's the best. 1.2, no, 1.3. Yeah. It definitely wasn't like a turbo diesel. No, it's petrol. Okay. So that was naturally aspirated, 69 horsepower. That's where I learned to like really yeah. feel the, linear power curve of an na engine <laughs> and now i've got one with two turbos which is going to swap backwards go upside down into a ditch oh head <coughs> so sick the seats matt the seats it's insane ridiculous i'm going to end the video there because i'm with fear of just walking around it again and coming back to the seats <laughs> i'm going to learn more about it we're going to go and do some driving and for those of you that do like cars next time i'll be equipped with more information because i do love it myself well done mate thank you i'm buzzing go to the skate park Ha <laughs>